Welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. This is our little 10 minute window to the rest of the world. And today we're talking about one of the three greatest things that ever came out of Japanese pop culture. Action movies, anime, and giant monster movies. That's right. Giant monster movies. We got this many, many, many to choose from. There's Mothra. Mm -hmm. King Ghidra. King Ghidero. Uh, there's, um... Rodan. Rodan. Oh, gosh, Rodan. They all sound alike after a while. Yes, and they all have one purpose in life, which is... To crawl, to stomp, and to fly. And make a lot of noise, and destroy. Because that's why guys love these kind of things. If you're from the Massachusetts area, or the New England area in general, many of you will remember uh, WLVI Boston. Oh my gosh. Yes, I, I'm warming the hearts of a lot of people's Creature, memories here. Creature, double feature. Creature, double feature is where yep. many of our age have gotten their exposure to Godzilla. Ever since mm -hmm. he came on over 300 issues ago in the popular Fangora magazine, <laughs> where he graced the cover, King of All Monsters, Godzilla, mm -hmm. ever since then, he's taken America by storm. Here's why. <laughs> Let's begin in the beginning, Drew. 1954, mm. Toho Productions released Godzilla, King of All Monsters in Japan. big hit in Japan. So much so that drive-in movie theaters, and we've talked about them in the past, needed content. And one of the things they did was they actually brought this movie to America in 1956. But in order to make it an American movie, because they didn't have dubbing technology like they have today, they hired Raymond Burr, mm -hmm. Mr. Perry Mason himself. Do, 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 do. Yep, Mr. Perry Mason to be in this movie to play a reporter who is visiting Tokyo and witnesses the destruction of Godzilla. They shoot a whole bunch of us uh, of extra footage yeah. and inserted it into the original Japanese version. And it actually made a really good monster movie. The beginning of a legacy. Yes, this definitely started a partnership between American audiences and Japanese audiences that is still going on today. The interesting thing I like about his character is his name is Steve Martin. Steve Martin signing off from Tokyo, Japan. It was probably the, the most generic American name they could come up with. I guess they didn't have the foresight to see that in the 70s that name was going to take on a different meaning. Yeah, and they didn't exactly think about that. <laughs> but it's interesting because there are parts in, this, in the movie that aren't dubbed and there are parts in the movie that are. Mm -hmm. um, and in the parts that aren't dubbed, it's they always have the same scene. Raymond Burr is going in with his Japanese friend who's standing at the side of the room and they see the actual scene from the movie. And then like Raymond Burr like, goes back to the Japanese guy he's like, what were they saying? And <laughs> then the Japanese guy basically reiterates what, what the guy says to him. It was brilliant. And it set forth a, a format that they would further do in all the other movies to come. Yeah, every other movie since, they've always pretty much, they've always had an American actor, mm -hmm. or they would just reshoot mm -hmm. scenes. And, and re-record re -record the audio. Oh my gosh. But every single movie always had... Oh, yeah. This was probably the only one I think that was in black and white. ビッグニュース。今劇場でマイフリ券を買ってくれたみんなにもれなく、パーツでがったい。リアルゴジラクリスタルバージョンプレゼント。テレカツキ特別マイフリ券もよろしく。I mean, it's really just amazing just how many of these movies that have been made over the years. I mean... They all have a very simple formula uh, storyline, too. Yeah. It's always one lone scientist who discovers something, or, or they're on some expedition. Or some really beautiful reporter. And then they stumble upon something, and then for whatever reason, Godzilla shows up and... 
When you watch enough of these movies like we have over the years, you get to start you start to have some of your favorites. You get to realize that some of them are much better than others. One of my personal favorites is Godzilla vs. Mothra. And nothing's gonna stop them. And the best part is those traffic reports. Hey, there you see we have some uh, some action downtown. Apparently there's a Godzilla fight down there and uh Wow, man, it's uh, really going to tie up the highway, and if you're going to try to go to work, you're going to have to take another route. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back. Yes, we didn't go anywhere very far. We're still talking about monster movies. Oh, not just any monster movies. The king of all monster movies, Godzilla. Now he has many um, opponents, you could say. The funny thing about these movies is sometimes Godzilla is a hero, and he's saving Tokyo, and sometimes he's the enemy of. Godzilla is the good guy in most of them. It's just the bad guy is the other monster. Because in in the first one he was the bad guy. I don't know. He's been, he's been the bad guy in in the newer two thousand ones. Oh yeah. Seen. Now the newer ones are making him the bad guy. But after Godzilla came out with the popularity, they're like. Let's make him a hero. And that's what he's been doing. He's been fighting all the other monsters. Well. Destroying entire cities in the process, but. And whether old or new, you will always have the classic staple of the plaster building. The miniature tanks, the little plastic tanks that blow up in huge gasoline flames that wouldn't look like that if you were actually the right size. Nobody blows up buildings better than the Japanese, especially <sighs> in HO scale. And the tanks. <laughs> One of those movies actually had a budget because they'd have like the remote control tanks that they blow up. Otherwise, it was just the plastic model tanks that they destroyed. Mm. That's like one of the things you take away from the creature double feature. Love you. WLVI mm. Boston 56. Yeah, going back in time. Wow. <laughs> At the end of every Godzilla movie, there is some kid who just happens to be around all the chaos, and as Godzilla's going back in the sea, and the entire city is just totally wiped out. He's just standing there in front of all these adults going, Bye, Godzilla! Thank you for saving us! I think that kind of faded out in the early days, but I do know what you're talking about. Back to the creatures, because the creatures are what it's all about. Oh, yeah. One of my all-time favorites outside of Mothra is Godzilla versus King Gigero. In color. That's right. King Gigero. King Ghidorah. I know, Toho, they had the perfect, they created the perfect formula in the original Godzilla movie and they introduced it to America in an excellent way. Man in a rubber suit crushing miniature Tokyo. Or as I like to refer to it, Godzilla's stomping ground. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Okay. You know, it really is. And of course, even in the bad ones. Consider this like a PSA warning. Yeah. You want to stay away from King Kong versus Godzilla for, like, for various reasons. First of all, you want to stay away from any movie that puts their creature named versus Godzilla. Godzilla always does diversity. That is a stable. That's something to watch out for. This was a Japanese version of uh, King Kong, and it is horrible. Yeah, it is. He looks terrible. Whether they're old or new, the classic formula stays true. We got blowing up mini tanks, crushing plaster buildings. A model helicopters and, and jets that uh, fly on strings. These buildings are always empty. Yes. Where you would think. Go? You would think. Like, a massacre of thousands would happen every single time, but building's always empty. He's courteous that way. Yeah, like the Japanese. They're very courteous people. We need to check it out. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. Google it, find it, find a station, creature double feature. You gotta get a fix of Godzilla. This is stopping.